Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Director Watch, an awards watch podcast that attempts to get inside the mind of cinema's greatest auteurs. Spoiler it drives them. And maybe we go on a few unrelated tangents along the way. I'm Ryan McQuaid, the executive editor here at Awards Watch. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Jay Better. And today we're talking about an action film inspired by Vim Vendors. What? Is that possible? That's what William Friedkin says, and we'll talk about that. But To Live and Die in L.A. is the film that we are talking about today. And it is, in many people's minds, the last rate William Friedkin film. We'll see if uh, either of us think that is the case, whether this is a great film or if this is the last one of those in Friedkin's career. It's an interesting conversation to have, but I'm pumped for it. Ryan, this was my first viewing, uh, so so certainly a lot to say about this one, but uh, it's definitely a fascinating watch. It was my first viewing too. Man, I got to say, if this is the last great one, then... That's kind of sad for a series, don't you think? Well, this is like the halfway we have like point five, of our series, I think. Yeah, we have like five more episodes to go, and this yeah, would be and maybe the, maybe the we will end up thinking otherwise. But I, I I think popular opinion would say this is the last rate universally adored, and it's definitely been reclaimed in the same way that Sorcerer has kind of been reclaimed mm-hmm. a little bit. Uh, but but I think in many people's minds, this is the last like canonical whole Friedkin movie. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, some people are really attached to Killer Joe. That's why we're going to talk about it later. Or a lot of people really mm-hmm. like Bug. But yeah, I guess in terms of like what he's known for, right? Like when he sadly passed away, there were a couple of films, right? It's It's what we've talked about in the past here on the show. Of like what are the films that they will be known for like in their byline you know mm-hmm. i saw this one on his byline for some uh places like this was up there I with yeah with uh shining and sorcerer and Fr- and french connection exorcist so, not sure yeah exorcist wow it's been a long day yes that that film one of those horror films he did that one of those right? old horror movies <laughs> <laughs> they're all um, the same yeah that, no well they're all they're made all up. the same. They're all the same. They're all psychological and influential. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, this is a really interesting one. I gotta say, I didn't know really what to expect going into it. And um, but Jay, obviously, was there was there any movies in between from the last one that we talked about to this one? There sure were. Or okay. rather was. There was, there was. one. There was one film in between. Okay. And so we, because last week uh, we had the pleasure of talking with Eric about cruising and what a fun episode that was. Um, so in between cruising and to live and die in LA, Jay, what was the film in between that you clearly watched? And I didn't, I, I did. And I think I haven't seen all of the Friedkins yet, mm-hmm. but if he has a movie worse than this one, <laughs> that'll be a real bummer. Because this one was rough. It is sort of William Friedkin's attempt at making maybe a Dr. Strangelove style military satire. Like a a fail, like a fail safe. Poking at the military industrial complex. And Mm. who better to be the lead of a biting satire than Chevy Chase? Oh, Jesus. And I think that is probably the film's biggest flaw is i don't know about you run i think chevy chase i do not think he's a good actor he's fascinating isn't he back then he is nowadays spend a lot of time on chevy if you i know. don't want to peel that onion too much because that'd get you down a rabbit hole that what had... is chevy chase good at as an actor especially as a lead actor are you talking just are, are, okay? So we're not getting into the problem. So what? What is he just, good in? Let's just say what is Chevy Chase good? That's a good in? question. He's good that's in Caddyshack. Good. Yeah, he's great in Caddyshack. Um, he's good in the Vacation movies, which is yeah. the closest thing that he is to a lead. Although those movies really are ensembles. Yes. No, I, I I agree. Though he's the he's definitely the center. Agreed. Of those movies, especially. Do you have a favorite Vacation movie? Is it the original? I'm a I'm an OG Vacation guy. Okay. On Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Yeah, which is I mean, those. Totally, I feel like totally valid opinion. I think mean, I think those are the two, right? Mm-hmm. 
I'm, I'm, an, I'm more of the Ed Helms one. <laughs> the one he refused to be in, correct? I didn't even see that movie. Did you? No. No, because I have... Was that Ed Helms? Christina I guess he Applegate? was. He that was. was yes, was so Christina Applegate. Okay. He was in it, technically. Mm. He had a little cameo? He had a little cameo, yeah. Came back and so to did, Clark? So did, yeah, and so did uh, Beverly D'Angelo mm. as well. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm trying to look at it. I mean, like, we're just talking movies, right? Yeah. Just Chevy. Yeah. Just what do I, I mean, he's good in community. He is good in community. Have you ever seen uh, foul he play? Hated it. You ever seen foul play? Uh, no, I have not. I don't like Fletch. You're not a Fletch guy. Mm-mm. Controversial opinion. I actually like Fletch more with John Hamm than I do Chevy Chase. I agree. I think that's better than either of the Chevy. Because he's uh, cause he's just a little bit, I don't know. He's more charismatic. A hundred percent. I like Spice Like Us, though. Have you ever seen that? Uh, nah, pass. Not a, not a fan of it? No. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't like it. He's also um, in the worst John Carpenter movie as well. Or maybe not the worst one, but it's really bad. Are Memoirs you, of an Invisible Man. You seen I, that one? Yeah, ooh, no, it's bad. Yikes. Um, what about uh, Three Amigos guy? See, Three Amigos. I love Steve Martin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love Martin Short. But that one doesn't entirely work for me. He's in one of the worst movies of all time, Jay. One of the worst movies of all time. Nothing but trouble. Have you ever seen that? Oh, yes. I have seen that. that it's is- bad an abomination of a movie truly one of the worst things however we're never going to talk about it because we're never going to do a director dan Aykroyd series <laughs> but i don't know i don't never know never. <laughs> yeah they're really clamoring it, for it you know whatever i don't like chevy chase and i don't like this movie deal of the century did you watch it's, community yeah i i really like community yeah it's great they gave what us it, the russo brothers well so, so thank god for that well, yes, absolutely. Was it? I mean, I didn't watch all of Community, but um, I don't I mean, think I watched anything from his Yahoo departure on. Oh, okay, the Yahoo series, because now they've been like trying to make it into. Was a that movie. the last one? I guess so. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, that show is. Remember when Yahoo had a streaming service? That was wild. I felt like everyone's everyone took gonna, a stab at it. Now everybody's gonna, like, "This was a bad idea." Yeah, it's, Whoops. it's not doing good. Um, do you think by next year there's only going to be like again back down to Amazon and Netflix essentially and Apple? They're they're going to cling to it because if they they're going to go down with the ship on these things, they're going to get fired. Yeah. So so they need that Peacock and that Paramount Plus. I I, I think some of them will merge. Mm -hmm. Is my guess. You'll see Paramount merge with whoever. Well, they merge with Showtime, so technically that's all. There well, and then Paramount and Showtime will then create a Gundam with Amazon <laughs> or something. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know, but well, it's like Discovery with uh with uh, Max. Max. Yeah, it'll be more stuff like yeah. that, and yeah. you know, Warner Discovery is not exactly setting the world on fire, so they might be bought by Apple or something. You know, I gotta tell you, for a while, you know who's the one that's that's killing it right now, evidently, because they got so many new subscribers because those football games was the was Peacock. Interesting. Yeah, I have Peacock. The live the, sports angle of it all. I have for the streaming. dumbed down version of Peacock for free because I subscribe to Xfinity. You got Peacock Lite? Yeah, I got Peacock Super Ad version. <laughs> it's like, no, like Peacock Freebie. So like, oh, remember when we had to do that for uh, Morbin yeah. Collar? Was that Morbin Collar where we had to do that? Yeah. God, truly one of the most worst experiences just a cursed watching. yeah watching experience because you couldn't rent it anywhere so when we no. explain that to the audience um, and you know what you can't rent this one anywhere either which is no interesting. that was the interesting thing i had to buy the 4k i bought the 4k as well honestly looks good i'm gonna tell you looks great and looks great worth the buy i agree just a spoiler worth the buy yeah. um anyway deal of the century it kind of starts out with a almost verhoven Oh. satirical commercial and you're a big verhoven I'm, guy i'm big verhoven guy that's but guy i wish this movie movies. was made by Paul whether it was it, this would have been early for verhoven but 
Verhoeven or even Altman, I think, could have done something Ooh. with the ensemble in this film and the satire of it all. But Altman didn't uh, have like on the nose. No, not really. Beat but you he over the head. Made it satire. better because of that. I yeah, because he would have subdued it. This is very much. Yeah. It starts out with this big commercial for like drones. Also, it's McKay. Quasi interesting. It's McKay ish, except even worse than that. No, but it it's like it's all about marketing military companies this sounds like an adam mckay movie that you are describing it is yeah uh, to a certain extent there is a little bit of that dna what's that one movie what's that one movie that was on netflix david michaud did it i believe oh war machine war machine that's what it sounds like too yeah that was one of their big first attempts at movies right yeah when they were like we're gonna do this with brad pitt Pitt movie we got the guy who did the rover right he did the rover thing and then he sucks yeah so yeah i didn't think it was terrible but it's it's pretty bad not to the rover or to what is it he did no animal no kingdom? compared to that no animal kingdom 2 right isn't I it weird animal that kingdom. isn't it weird that like animal kingdom turned into like the a tnt share, series for like, like a popular eight, one yeah like very popular but like you wouldn't it's think it's one this, of those shows that no one i know watches but is apparently very popular it's like it's like crazy. Everybody in my freaking office right now is talking about suits. What's what's going on with the suits? You don't know about the suits? I mean, it's back on Netflix, right? Is, yeah, it's on Netflix well, now. So everybody's every, watching it again. So at, during the 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 strike, you know, nothing was coming out, and Netflix got suits. And it's it's like the thing about suits because I've seen it. If you got YouTube or TikTok or whatever, great for clips of like just people are you know are lawyers and being like. They you didn't give suits. that brief. You didn't get that brief to me. So fuck you. Essentially, like you know what I mean. You're like, whoa, that's a lot. And then you got the Markle, well, the Meghan Markle people that want to watch it too, because it's her only thing. So you just kind of had like this perfect, you know, you throw it all in a crock pot and it made a soup, sort of thing. No, I mean, I'm I'm not kidding. My boss came over and made some suits reference, and I I was just completely blind. Wait, you don't want suits? It. And everyone else on my team was like, oh yeah, Sam, man, that's a total <laughs> Sam move. And I'm just thinking, you got any deal of the century references we can talk about? Uh, that's kind of where I'm see, at. See, I was right now. see at the time when Suits was out, I didn't watch Suits. I I just I I was more high class, and I watched The Good Wife on CBS. Of course, so, yeah. yeah. Because if you're going either, The Good Wife's great. Uh, Suits was I. I felt like, like Suits. The great Wife. Yeah, it was The Great Wife. Um, man, Josh Charles batting a thousand on that show. Uh, star of uh, Muppets from Space. There you go. Uh, not that that was relevant to this <laughs> fucking conversation, but okay. Uh, no, but like suits, I don't know. There was something about suits that like the, they couldn't use the F word, right? Until mm-hmm. like, I guess later seasons, they started getting away with it because they were like, they realized, oh, we are on cable. Is that on TNT? It was on USA. USA. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so every other word was like, that's bullshit or you got to be kidding me with all this shit so they just would use shit and bullshit all the time and that was the only mm-hmm. like bad word they use and it, it bad it was it was a little chat gbt it was a, it's a stupid premise like it, it of I don't a, know what the premise is they're lawyers you know, okay they so are? um oh my god i can't believe i'm going to tell you the premise of suits on an episode here but essentially mike who is the lead character he's he's not a lawyer but he's really smart he's got like you know an eidetic memory he's a professional smart guy yes professional smart guy essentially Mm -hmm. and he got like busted for he was so the cops are like chasing him in the opening episode because he's got like some weed um and anyway he ends up in a room with harvey harvey specter who is like the head of this law firm right Mm -hmm. and or one of the the partners of the law firm and essentially he like wows him in the interview but obviously he can't have him as a lawyer because that's against the law and also there's some Obviously. stupid some stupid thing about like that they only take guys from harvard from this law school from like because it's in their bylaws or whatever so they just like lie that he's from harvard and fake all this shit and him and and that's the whole series is like he becomes a lawyer essentially but he's lying the whole so it's time. like catch me if you can yeah it's like catch me if you can meets law and order you know what would make yeah. that show better if it wasn't that if they had to transport dynamite in the south american jungle and well trucks. i mean yeah i mean i wouldn't say the tension in Seuss is near to what sorcerer is but um scholars will say down the road that they're pretty comparable yeah 
Anyway, yeah. I, I think we've covered the oldest century, I guess. So what I, you're saying, I, think I don't even know what the fuck it's about now at this point. So uh, Chevy Chase plays an arms dealer. Okay. Who is selling weapons to people in South America on behalf of this military company. Okay. And he ends up stealing a contract from, of all people, Wallace Shawn. He kills <laughs> Wallace Shawn in order to get this contract. Wallace Incon- Shawn. Inconceivable. Wallace Shawn. Let me tell you how inconceivable this part is. Wallace oh. Shawn was married to Sigourney Weaver. And then Chevy Chase not only steals the contract, but steals Sigourney Weaver. What the fuck is what? Despite what? the fact that she is grieving her dead husband. Wait, is Gregory Hines in this? Yes. Okay. Uh-oh, something coming back to you? Okay. All right. No, it just I just remember seeing a po- you know how you see posters for these things? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember him being And like, it all oh. ends in this like terrible action special effects sequence yeah. where they're flying these planes and stuff. It's it's uh it's bad and most importantly not funny. Which How is, is really what this movie has to be. Uh he plays Chevy Chase's partner. Is he any good? Nobody's good in this. There, oh, there's okay. nothing Nobody survives. Uh, yeah, it really is just one of those where your eyes kind of glaze over and you just watch it. It turns into a little bit of unsurprisingly with Chevy, kind of just a bunch of skits. Can I can I ask you, when you watch a movie like this, do you regret then being a completist? You know, that's a good question. I've never asked you this. I've never asked you this. Are there movies that I watch and truly regret watching? I mean, was this one of Honestly, them? Honestly, no, I, I I like these projects more than, say, watching The Flash. That's fair. Right? Even though I'll, this is the only, this is, this right here is literally the only time in my life I will ever talk about Deal of the Century. So might as well do it for this series. So, you know, I got to exhaust all of it and go into like a suits conversation and, 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 and you know, all this, all this stuff. It's got to bleed into every inch of this conversation. Yeah. But that is an interesting thing but the fun thing about it is sometimes they're all surprises you right yeah isn't that how like it makes this kind of stuff worth it and not like a cookies fortune sort of situation where you yeah you didn't expect there were several altman's altman's where that was Mm. the case and i would say several powell and pressburgers as well where that was what's the the one where um it's paul newman but he plays like pat garrett right or or he plays no not paul newman no. Are you talking about Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid? No, that's not Altman, but there's like a where he it's oh, the oh, Western. Oh, 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 oh. Um, yes. It's um oh my god. It's can't good. I, I, yeah, I no, it's exactly good. I just about, can't, I can't remember the can't think of the name of it. Oh, it's gonna kill I know it's if anybody's listening out there. This is coming to a screeching halt here. Yes, it is. Um Gregory Hines, love him. Have you ever seen the movie Running Scared? With him and uh, yes, uh, yeah. Billy Crystal? Pretty, pretty pretty solid flick. Mm-hmm. Good solid flick. Like a good like um is it is it would you it's say it's kind a lethal, of lethal weapon worse, ripoff? worse midnight run kind of midnight run lethal weapon kind of in that sort yeah. of vein um, buffalo bill and the indians buffalo bill and the indians there you go i knew mm-hmm. it was something like that that's good a good film. movie good movie really good movie an interesting movie for uh newman if you go watch the yeah, document did a couple altmans if you watch the documentary maybe his worst movie <laughs> what is that what was that one called quintet Quintet. That's right. I they put Vaseline just all over the camera. Yeah, it's fucking awful. It's a bold choice. Um, and it didn't work out, Cotton. Uh, but uh, no, that one. If you watch the the Ethan Hawke documentary about um, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, they have a section in there about that and how that movie was really important to to Newman and everything. He really he felt that that was one of his more personal films that he ever did. I guess that's why he came back for another. There and you go. Not another one after that. Exactly. He was like, uh, no, no, thank you. Um, but anyway, so freaking does that. Doesn't work out, I assume. Doesn't not work a, out. It's not, probably a, a big old flop, right? Big old flop. So he decides. And he's not exactly. His phone is not ringing off the hook for, nope. for new opportunities. But boy, does it for this one. And he makes movie we're here to actually talk about today nine hours later uh yeah, which is hot start. yeah to live and die in la which is a, a fearless secret service agent will stop at nothing to bring down the counterfeiter who 
killed his partner. Ooh. So that's William Peterson and Willem Dafoe. Jay, I, I gotta tell you, I'm just gonna put my cards out on the table. Yeah. I think this movie rules. I think this movie rules as well. I watched it twice. You watched it twice? In the last three days. What? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm fascinated to hear about your deep dive into it. Obviously, yeah. we're both going in cold turkey into this thing. It's such an interesting point, like you mentioned, how we've talked I, about I, it. I reheated the turkey. Yeah, yeah. You were like, I got to get leftovers, yeah. um, essentially. It's interesting to see because we've talked about the last couple of weeks since Exorcist. It's kind of been a downward trajectory. Commercially, as yeah. far as his reputation. Yeah. Well, and also, critically, it's been mixed as well. A little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, cruising was absolutely reviled. So yeah, cruising is considered uh and a, one of, was yeah was mixed too. And well, then the other two movies don't exist. So yeah. <laughs> Even though we just talked about it for like thirty minutes. Yeah, it doesn't exist. That and uh, other things. And other things. Um but this one this one felt like a like the comeback. Like the comeback kid. Someone embracing the era that he is working. Very in. much so. And uh, so much so, Roger Ebert uh, loved this movie. Mm -hmm. You know what Raj gave this? I'm going to say three and a half. You would be wrong. He gave a big old four out of four. Dang, Raj. Raj loved it. Said it was uh, nice to see him have the comeback. You know who apparently didn't love it? Who? Michael Mann. (laughs) Wow. Well, no shit. I was, I was, I was watching it, be like, man, I wonder how Michael Mann thought of this movie because he probably feel it felt, it felt. Let's just say it, it felt very Miami Vice. There is a this. rumor that Michael Mann filed a lawsuit. It has never been substantiated, but that is a a widely spread rumor that Michael Mann fired a lawsuit against Friedkin for this movie because he thought that he was ripping him off. Yes. Yeah. But that didn't work. Although out. Michael Mann did. Ask Friedkin if he wanted to be Hannibal Lecter in Manhunter. So there you go. So I guess they made up. Yeah, but I guess so. Would that have been that would have been interesting? Brian Cox is so good though. I don't so know. good in that. Yeah. Is Cox your definitive Lecter, or would you no, say that it's it's, yeah, it's, it's Hopkins? Hopkins. Yeah. It's Hopkins. Even though Hopkins kind of saturated himself. Yeah, I mean that's the question. Has Hopkins only made one good Hannibal Lecter movie? I think Red Dragon's pretty good. But it's not. It's not Red Dragon's whatever. But it's not. Um, it's not Manhunter or it's not Manhunter. Games. No, but uh, and Hannibal, Hannibal's I'd bad. sue. I'd sue Michael Mann if I was William Freakin for stealing Peterson. Come on. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he stole Peterson. Uh, who's an actor, definitely of this era, for sure. Like of this time period for this, this was genre. His first big movie. Yeah, this was big. This was huge, and he's. He's really good in this. And this is a saw role. him in uh one of Friedkin's casting guys or something was in Toronto and he saw mm-hmm. Peterson in a production of a streetcar named Desire. And he was like, Billy, you gotta see this guy. You gotta see him. And he's like, Nobody can do streetcar anymore. Brando owns that role. I'm I I just tell him to come meet with me. And he's like, mm. no, You gotta see this. And then Friedkin saw it and said wow, I've never seen somebody make it their own since Brando like he did. This is a big so, role. This is a big role for Defoe, too. Yeah. It's like and right, he passed, he right did before. A, he pulled a Scheider and yeah. just cast Defoe on the spot because if you want a guy that looks like Willem Defoe, there's only one guy that looks like Willem Defoe. Yeah, so you got to you gotta cast him. It's right before Platoon, like a year yeah. before yeah. when this movie comes out. And it's a little bit Streets of Fire and... And hunger and the love and yeah, he gets, he gets on a heater here. Yeah, he's he's and then he becomes Willem Dafoe, which is yeah. uh, one of the actors of character actors, I would say, of his yeah. generation. He rocks. Not, an and actor. then William yeah. Peterson becomes the biggest star on TV, the richest <laughs> man on television. I was going to say, like, you're talking about like our parents knowing probably who William Peterson is because he's the, they all watch CSI when we were kids. You yeah. know what I mean, uh, so Jay, what do you think of on the most popular TV show for like a decade? Yeah, and spawned Crazy. essentially spawned that and Law and Order spawned now what we have all these spinoff shows for. Yeah, for all I know, he's got a producer credit on all CSI stuff. For all forward. I know, I, he I is know. he's in a swimming pool of money. 
for he all is it does there is you see a movie <laughs> like this and there is part of you that wishes man i wish we just got william peterson movies I feel like I feel like is he kind of retired now? Is he semi retired? I guess. Uh, he's yeah. He's he'll pop up in something every now and then, and sometimes absolute junk. That I feel like you know who would hear of. You know who feels like a perfect person to like grab William Peterson and like throw him into a movie. Because Tarantino. He, yes, but I was going to say no one. Because oh, he likes no one, he likes doing that. He likes man guys. He does like you know man I mean? guys. He likes yeah. men. He likes yeah. He likes men. Man. Yeah, he'll work with man, manly man. Yep. Um, and he did it with, um, God, what's his name? From uh, Full Metal Jacket. Oh, uh, Matthew Modine. Yeah. He's been doing, yeah, he's been doing it with Modine. And uh, what's his face? Uh, Plays like the bank teller in uh, the beginning of The Dark Knight. William, what's his face? You know what I'm talking about? I know you're talking about the bad guy from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, you know, Fickner, but, William Fickner. Fickner. Yeah, you almost yeah. call him, you know, freaking. But who, of way. course, is most well known for being the bad guy in Michael Bay produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Exactly, because he you plays would Shredder. Never, He's Shredder. Is he Shredder? He's Shredder. He's a good villain. He's a good guy. That's he is. Villain. He's got a scary face too. He's got a little bit of Defoe face. He's got it. He's a discount bit. Defoe. That's what he is. Oh, good call. Discount Defoe. Dis- yeah, because he's on like freaking prison break and television shows and shit. He's not in. An you know, Oscar Willem Dafoe's real name is William. Yeah, I would have. And he just fu- changed it. I would have fucking assumed so. Yeah, I'm. I, I would, <laughs> because people know Will. Like, yeah, probably too William many Williams. Was, too many William Dafoe. You're gonna remember a Willem. Yeah, because he was probably going to the castings, going like, oh, it's like me and this other William Dafoe. We're both standing up at the same time. You know, Look, you're gonna the last name's Willem. not going to set you out or will it's Defoe. a nonsense name. Will Defoe. You remember Willems? You remember Joaquin's big Willie Defoe style? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Um, He's fit in this movie. He is ripped in this movie. Um, He's cut for sure. He looks great. This movie. What do you think? Yeah, so we're dancing first watch for me and I kind of knew this was the one movie, if you kind of lay out this series. Were you nervous you about? Kind of, you kind of say, this seems like a J movie. Oh, okay. And You uh, kind of had your eye on it? I definitely had my eye on it. It's known as this big 80s stylish genre movie. That's not the movie in this series that I feel like is a Ryan movie. It's coming up later. We'll talk about it in the next couple of weeks. Interesting. So that's yeah. going to be... I'm trying to think of what's the funniest one it could be. Jade. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think you pulled that joke twice now. And it, I might it's, have. It's not getting old. <laughs> but it uh, th- this this was a movie I was really looking forward to, and I had a high expectation where I was almost kind of nervous about watching because, you know, I dropped down the money for that 4K and just hoped I would love it. And hey, you don't want to return it. it. No, don't want to return it. Look, I opened that baby. Can't return that anymore. Can't yeah, you can. That. It's lost all its value. That's not true. I can't sell that on eBay for retail. No, but you can get your credit back. Can you? Well, didn't you? Yeah. If it's open, did you get it on Amazon? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, oh, you're right. You're right. And yeah, as much crap as we buy on Amazon, I'm basically like an Amazon. Well, like I remember, I got a blue, I got a 4K last year, and it didn't work. Mm. It didn't work. So you ever, I, you ever had one of those when they? recall a a disc yes did you have that with citizen kane no i just didn't buy citizen kane for like eight mm. months what did you was have like, the recall for um what was the criterion that i had to recall for it was an old old one I remember i think it was like the red shoes when they first did that because i remember they oh, had problems that with that recall i didn't yeah, buy that, that one right away recall. yeah that a recall mm. i've had two yeah. citizen kane 4k and the bring me the head of alfredo garcia blu-ray i don't have that did kino lorber do that or was that, uh, was that i think it was like, arrow arrow did that okay i've been meaning to watch that movie you talk about that movie that all movie the fucking rules time. one of the great films just I'll one of the it. best movies it rocks the mean uh, movie yeah, so check that one out like a mean Ooh, is it like nasty. a western like western nasty movie uh what it's like a revenge western. revenge revenge oh you know how much i love those but it's it's more modern day it's not 
you know, we're not talking unforgiven. We're talking no country ish. Ooh, a little bit. Kind like of that the like the like uh, that one Tommy Lee Jones movie. The, even nastier. The three burials of. Uh, yeah, the three amigos. Yeah. Something no, like no, nah, not that one. You know what I'm talking? I can't remember what the full title of it. But anyway, I can't either. But anyway. To live and die. Man, we are all over the place today. Woo! Um, <laughs> to live and die in LA. So I, so you know, I pop this thing in. I'm, I'm really excited to watch it. And first time I watched it three days ago. As I'm watching it, I, I, I think I just had Miami Vice on the brain. And so the whole time I'm kind of like, this feels like the greatest episode of television ever made, which <laughs> to me was sort of a backhanded compliment. And as I, I thought it's a about good it, compliment. I mean, look, it is, it is high praise but also i was a little disappointed by that but as i kept thinking about it over the last couple of days i it, it really stuck with me there's so many things about it really really stuck with me and i just said you know what before we do this episode i'm gonna watch it again because there is a part of me that feels like i missed something in the same way that there was a film in there, there always seems to be a couple films every year that come out, new releases, where I think, I think I'm wrong about that movie. And not that I didn't like this movie. Like, I had it at four stars. And I was like, this is very, very good. I'm not sure if it's great. Name the last but one. From the like last a one was year. All of Us Strangers, Was is the one from 2023. That Wasn't Tar I, that for you last year? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, but All of Us Strangers, and I haven't done a rewatch of All of Us Strangers, mm -hmm. so... In my, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, some of that stuff didn't work for me, but I think if I watch it again, it might work for me. I think I might be just wrong about that movie. You think it's and, like a like a headspace sort of thing or like a mood or where you're at or it could be. It could be that or you just like you and but you are piecing it together and you're like, functionally, this is a movie for me. Right. But I just can't. Something is either missing or forcing between you to fully land on like not masterpiece level but like like this rules or this is this yeah, is me yeah it's for me and it's also when i have a thought almost like when i have a stupid hook like that's the greatest episode of television ever made or with all of us mm -hmm. strangers the best three and a half star movie of the year it's like you're you're lying to yourself about something i don't know what it is are you trying but, to like fit a narrative that you've already created then and no and it's not it it's crumbles? not like that it's not like i went into this no 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 but a, like as you're watching it you develop one and then that might be true and then like and then like by the end you're like well it fits it but i think there's more to it than that yeah that that might be it where i kind of get stuck on something i get you and yeah and and i think with this one it, it really was that lack of finality that i didn't feel the first time i totally felt that the second time like yeah. entirely this this closes the loop while also saying all the bad stuff here is going to perpetuate, it also <laughs> closes the loop thematically on what it's trying to say, 100%. And then just stylistically, aesthetically speaking, this thing rules. It's, it's, it strays away from a lot of the Friedkinisms that we've kind of come to, come to know and love. It's, I would say, lot less documentary-like. I would say it's definitely more stylized and it has some really incredible cinematography from Robbie Mueller, who had just done Paris, Texas and William Friedkin saw Paris, Texas and said, I want my movie to look like that. I want it to look super saturated and painterly, which is not really what Friedkin has really been committed to in the past. And interestingly, the one thing Robbie Mueller didn't do on this movie was the car chase. He said, I don't think I can do this. It's, he said it was a lighting thing. He just couldn't make the lighting work with all these different cuts at different kind of time of day and, and all these different lighting as the car moves along and stuff. So he brought on a, another camera operator to do that part, which I thought was interesting, but throw in the, the Wang Chung score as well, which has real vibes of Tangerine Dream in um, sorcerer just as far as what he was going for there the music mm -hmm. is very different and it's way poppier which i really like mm -hmm. and another little anecdote he he did the same thing 
with Wang Chung as he did with Tangerine Dream. He said, here's the script, write me music, and I'll incorporate it into the movie before they had seen any of the footage. And he gave one stipulation. Write whatever you want. Whatever you do, don't write a song called To Live and Die in L.A. And then after everything was done, they gave him the, the first stab at the music. And then as they were editing, they come to him and they say, hey, we made this song. It's called To Live and Die in L.A. And William Friedkin loved it, shot an entire new opening scene and put it in the movie, which is awesome. But just so stylistically unique, a great time, violent, like so violent, which I appreciate just the the provocation of that. That's a kind of a Friedkin special. And I think Peterson is a freaking star in this. I really, really do. And Defoe, too. Defoe, he is one of the great foes. In this film, for uh, God's sakes, if you ask me, God damn it! But it's you really it's, just you really just tried, didn't you? You really this tried. Is what to I do, I get all the way through, and then mm-hmm. I undercut myself. I try mm-hmm. to sound smart, and then I'm like, if this sounds dumb, I'm going to do something dumb at the end. But uh, I love this movie. I unabashedly love love this movie. I think I, uh, I don't know. We'll we'll do rankings at the end, but I might have some hot takes about this. We'll see. I got to I got to let it marinate a little bit, but this movie rocks. Uh yeah, this movie rules. It's um It's all vibes, baby. The it's vibes the movie, vibes. you got a vibe with it. It's not like Tenet or anything, but it's like you got to you got to it's because it makes sense. It's more coherent. <laughs> Although I think Tenet actually mostly makes sense. It's Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but you and, I, you and I get that. But there is definitely parts of it where you're like Oh, what is happening here? And you're just like, it doesn't matter. Fir- Shut up. I think the first 30 minutes of this movie, you could maybe make that argument. Um, I think it's a little disorienting on the first watch. Uh, but um, you're talking about when they're watching the president. Yeah, I think that, like a lot of that stuff early on. And you're just like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, but I get well, they it. Do, like, they do no explaining. It's very, mm-mm. it's very like you Michael better manish in that. Yeah, regard. it's very man. That's why I was like, when I was watching, I was like, did I put it in the wrong right disc? Because, yeah. um, it feels very man, feels very of its era, which I can understand why Michael Mann would get um, a little upset. Even but I to was this watching. point, all that Mann had done, I mean, he'd done Miami Vice, which Miami Vice is an interesting thing because Michael Mann never directed an episode of Miami Vice. He was just no. sort of the architect of Miami Vice. Well, it's like so. it's like how he is with the, what was that show? Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo Vice? Vice. Yeah, Tokyo Vice. The, love, um, the guy loves a vice. Loves. Uh, he was squad. the same thing with uh, what was that? Lucky. He did the pilot. He of directed that, some the... of Lucky, and he directed one episode of Tokyo Vice. But yeah. still, he was more the architect of that. He was like Fincher. And... He's like the style of the show is going to be. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. that's kind of what all these guys do now, right? Is they're like, yeah. I'm going to set the template for this show, and yeah. then you guys copy what I do. Scorsese with like uh, Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, like that's yeah. that. And, you're uh, gonna you're gonna fall. Vinyl. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't want to forget for Scorsese about vinyl. Vinyl. Was that David Chase too? Was it? Was Chase? Did I love David Chase? By the way, it's one of my guys. Um, was, but, he, was he included on vinyl? I don't know. Was he vinyl, or so, was that just Van, well, Van Patten? Um, I'll yeah. just say, Michael Mann at this point, movie wise, I believe had only done Thief, Thief, and The Keep. So Miami Vice was kind of really his big, what he was known for by this point, because Thief. Didn't really make a huge impact, and the keep was an absolute nightmare production. So, yeah, he wasn't. It wasn't like he was copying Michael Mann because Michael Mann hadn't really done anything yet, except for some of the stylization of Miami Vice. You see that in this film for sure, down to the fact that they call out the name of the city in the title of the movie. I don't think that's an accident. No, I was I I was wrong. I was wrong. It was uh, uh, Terry Terry Winter. Terrence uh, Winter. Got it. Yeah. Got it. But Winter, who did like Sopranos and Boardwalk Empire and the HBO wrote, guy. Wrote Wolf of Wall Street. Um, yeah. Um, yeah big, sort of the yeah. Michael Mann of uh, HBO. Well, it's like him and uh, like Van Patten did a ton of stuff for Boardwalk. And I think they they were hoping that this would be the next thing. And then 10 episodes later, they realized uh, no, it will not be. Yeah. Um, because it it's terrible. Um, yeah. Yeah. But like it's yeah, Scorsese did an episode, uh, claimed uh, Carl Franklin did an episode. That's about it. Um, yeah, it lasted yeah. a season. Bobby Cannavale. That's when we tried to make him a thing. No, I'm thinking of 
what was the show about the porn industry that they oh, did? Oh, the one with James Franco? And Maggie Gyllenhaal? Yeah. That's David Chase. That's uh, David Chase. I can't remember God what that God damn it, called. I can't remember that either. The Deuce. The Deuce. The Deuce. What an I amazing... Say, I wanted to say Cherry for some reason, but that's the name of my favorite film. What do you think of David Simon? Uh, Good. Good shows? You like his shows? You watch his shows? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I, I haven't watched all of his shows by any stretch of the imagination, but... You watch The Wire? I watch The Wire. Love Is the that wire. the only one, maybe? I mean, did you watch Generation Kill, Treme, Show Me a Hero, The Deuce? We I've own seen this... some of Treme. Did you watch uh, We Own the City with John Barenthal, that show that he had? No, in? you know, that's one that I really want to watch because I love me some Johnny B. Yeah, we love Johnny B. Anyway, we my thoughts. on the pod. Yeah, he's podding, right? He's a potter. He's, a, he's got he's, a pod. He's got he's a got pod. A, he's got a weird pod. He's got a very joe rogan brand pod it feels like yeah he's one one you're sliding into that world Mm -hmm. yeah and then he does like what is it then he does like king richard and we all kind of forget about him for a while he does origin yeah okay right (laughs) i'm like for real like what are we doing here because you make fury and origin and work with taylor sheridan and well taylor sheridan taylor sheridan might listen to rogan no shit. Like, but I don't think Ava Ava Duvernay listens to Rogan. No, I think she listens <laughs> to the opposite of that. What would be the opposite of Rogan for that? that What's the like, opposite of Rogan? Um, um, uh, I'll, the, I'll, the 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 um, Pod Save America. Pod Save America. Yeah. yeah, I don't think she would go that or NPR. NPR. I think more or more all things considered. You yeah, know, yeah, that's probably more accurate there. Um, cause one's got a lot of facts and the other one is Joe Rogan. Um, so just the Roganator, the Roganator. Yeah. Well, where are we going to get him on the pot? Anyway, he's coming on for K mutiny. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Cause takes. Yeah, I, I would assume with a, a trial, a, poli- a trial in the military. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. No. Almost like what you would say a political trial. No, no I don't want to hear. He's probably got some key for Sutherland opinions as well. Okay, when we talk about Kiefer Sutherland, I think that that's going to be a very interesting conversation, and we're just yeah, because we're talking K mutiny in a couple of weeks, folks. So just just hang on to your hats. Um, to live and die in L.A. I think that this movie, yeah, I I don't think that what you said, Jay, is actually incorrect at all. I think like it is like when I was watching, I was like, this is a template. You know, we were we mentioned running scared earlier, right? Mm-hmm. And Running Scared is, a, I think, a very good movie. But it's very much in the midnight run, lethal weapon sort of genre of or subgenre of its time. These buddy cop movies, you know, they've got two really charismatic leads. 48 hours. Yeah. You got, yeah, 48 hours. You got these two leads and they're, they're cooking and the rest of the story may not be the greatest thing, but you got two really good fine leads carrying this vehicle all the way to the finish mm-hmm. line. Right. And this is this is very much like Miami Vice. This is very much like like Michael Mann's movies uh, that we would see or that we would have after this, right? It really does feel a lot like Man uh, Manhunter. Yeah, it feels very much like the score, the vibe, the freneticism. The, What's the, better, this or Manhunter? You want my honest opinion? Yeah this it's tough i it's, love it's close it's close, to those movies. It's close. It's um close. it's very close i think that um it, it it's really interesting just because i really vibe with the seediness of the way freaking depicts um essentially our protagonist um as a cop we saw it with French Connection and how that that was really interesting in comparison to yeah. then cruising and now in comparison back over to live and die in LA. I find the leading it, edge of good and evil. It's very much so. And I think he, he's able to be able to dance it really well. But I think what those movies don't necessarily have that this one has is a just as interesting and compelling villain. Mm-hmm. And you have these cast of characters that you can't trust any single one of them. 
and you have this sort of weaving storyline. Did you ever see the movie um, Wild Things? When I was a teenage boy, that was a very important film. I was going to say, you're, you, the smile you gave right there was <laughs> alarming. I've not yet you. bought the 4K. That's for when I get divorced. <laughs> uh, but, but, so you can watch it by yourself you at the know, house? If, if I end up buying the Wild Things 4K, just know that something has gone awry. What I was going to say was, is I think a movie like that, which also feels like it's... Got to admit, don't remember much of the plot of Wild Things. But. It's essentially, it's very, well, you know, it's very melodramatic and it's very, yes. it's very leaning into Verhoeven, I think of the time. And, and, and also, oh, for sure. The basic instinct, the basic erotic instincts thriller, of the erotic the, thrillers, the but, yeah. but this, but this movie kind of has a little bit of that here as well, for sure. Definitely has, um, an, a way of sexiness. that I think that is really fascinating and, um, and fits with the style, but then ultimately kind of like the manipulation of who really is having power or who has information and, and oh in God. this movie well, that it's Peterson is kind of dis- like vile in this. He's, movie. Yeah. It's kind of disgusting when you, you know, the way that he uh, treats his informant girl is yeah, it's despicable, despicable. Yeah. And yet he's, it blurs the line, right? Cause you're like, you're supposed to be kind of like on this guy's side, right? Cause he's the cop, but then Defoe is, Mm-hmm. the bad guy but yet you kind of you, you it, it has those moral ambiguities between the two of them that i find to be what really makes this movie fascinating and i think the setup by by the midway point of this movie once you start getting to like essentially you get out of all like the the almost what feels like at times like uh him trying to do like avant-garde cinema and when he gets to just kind of do this just the simple story of this guy killed my partner i'm going after him i'm making a deal i'm getting in the seedy underground belly of this this guy is insane and and everything um and and it kind of becomes this cat and mouse between him and obviously peterson is is you know he's going to stop at at you know no ends to avenge his partner but that's complicated within a, a corrupt police department. It feels like as well. Right. And so mm-hmm. all those sort of boxes start getting checked off, but it's freaking's uh, kinetic uh, direction mixed with confident pacing that I find to be just ultimately so rewarding. And yeah, man, like the score kills the last 15 minutes of this movie again, or just awesome. The, the violence in this movie is over the top in a way that that is getting shot in the head. A lot of, a lot of guys can shot in the, in the junk um, and the head and everywhere. And it's all, um, you know, it's people it's, getting shot in the head is alarming. Yeah. But like, what's worse is like when he, when Defoe shoots the guy in the junk and it's, you're not expecting, you're like, oh, okay, maybe we'll shoot him in the leg or something. But it's like he shot him again in the is head. Is that where he gets shot? Are you talking about Waxman? Yeah, when he's on the ground, when he's, you know. He was in the safe? Yeah. It's not is in the that head. what he does? I kind of yeah. thought he shot him in, like, the thigh. No, because he's, like, on the ground, and he's like, ah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. on the ground. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. You're totally right. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. And then. You yeah, watched the they, movie twice. They, I watched it once. You can't remember that? When they kill his partner, and they just keep shooting him. With shotguns in the head? Yeah uh felt Tough. very it was like why i was like it did tarantino must really love this movie well, it kinda, you, know. you know what it reminded me of was the scene in robocop yeah where they where they kill him yeah where they're just like brutal. Whoosh, whoosh, yeah yeah God, literally shooting off body parts yeah i love that movie that's a good movie robocop we'll do him one day that'd be good god that would be really good he's one of my guys he's wild dude yeah he's, he's making another hollywood movie get excited is he really yeah what's he making right now what's for hoven making He's doing an Who's erotic political thriller. Oh shit! Well, if it's anything like Benedetta, I mean Benedetta ruled. But I, I don't know that he, if, if he's announced a uh, cast. Benedetta, or, one of the, one of the funnier movies of the decade. Benedetta, Benedetta, very funny, very funny movie. Looking to see if there's any new Verhoeven news. I don't know. It, it was announced a couple weeks ago, I think, but. Uh, can't can't wait for that one. I'll tell you what I love. One thing I love about get him driver. That'd be good. Yeah, driver works with with all these auteur like we mentioned 
auteur directors for their vanity projects. Yeah. Who's the guy who directed 65? He's my favorite auteur. <laughs> well, okay. Um, Did fair. you see 65? Yeah. I watched it on a plane. It was bad. It is a bad movie, but it's perfect for the plane. Yeah, I guess it's good. Plane it's perfect film. for the plane. Like, you're not going to watch that in a theater. You know what you shouldn't watch on a plane? What? To live and die in LA. Yeah, it's probably not. There's a lot of sex and violence in this movie. Well, yeah, there's that. And also, it looks too good to watch on a plane. Yeah, this 4K fucking it rips. slaps. It's it, it incredible. Rules. It rules. Yeah. And, and you know, it gives great visuals to what I find to be a fascinating aesthetic, which is this movie set in LA where you've got your Beverly Hills cops kind of style where you can go to the glamorous areas. This is industrial LA. This mm -hmm. is kind of uglier, grimier while still having that very popular at the moment, kind of romanticized, super saturated visuals that, uh, are kind of on the come up right now, but you would see really ramp up with Tony Scott and, uh, you know, some of the Bruckheimer films and later Michael Bay would really start embracing a little bit of this uh, aesthetic. But I just love that it isn't this super glamorous uh, movie while it still does have these beautiful vistas and sunsets and things like that, where it is exuding a similar kind of sexiness as Miami Vice with none of the like glamour to it, which I really like. It makes for a really interesting kind of dichotomy. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, what I, what I love about it from, for, for me again is I love that. Yes. It's sort of, you're, you mentioned the, the sort of television show template that this, that this is. And I think that while you were talking about, Jay, is it being um, essentially like a backhanded compliment? I don't think that that's like a bad thing. I think that like, this is a movie that is responsible a lot for the creation of the modern template. Maybe that we have, like, it feels like, like, it feels like it, it feels very, I mean, the anti heroes. That's for sure. It's got the anti heroes. I was watching. I was like, man, it's got some true detective a little bit in it as well, too. A little bit of that, yeah. yeah. But it does yeah. so... A little season two of that, for sure. At the end of the movie, he's just becoming Chance. And yeah. that's the circle. And it's like, you're kind of going back to the beginning, but I don't think there's any reason to do anything like this again. I mean, look, they could have made a To Live and Die in San Francisco or something and just kind of kept it going. But uh, I, I kind of like that it does end so in my opinion now after a second watch so <laughs> definitively and appropriately I think well i think well i think well like you're saying the circle's going to get going because corruption and crime and um because his partner at the end who he reluctantly wants him to be his partner it almost feels like it is continuously like a baton passes right they do get so very close in like four days yeah <laughs> No, they really do, right? Well, it feels like they might have worked. I think it's. Before, I think it's a week. But, I believe. Yeah, it's like a yeah, like a little less than a week. But I mean, wouldn't a traumatic event like this and the stress that it led up to that point and um, well, it just kind of makes him see he now has this worldview that the world is in a broken place. Yeah, he needs to fix it. Yeah, because that's what at all costs. At all costs, he'll be a monster if it fix the monstrosity of the world. Well, yeah, but I mean, this essentially by the end too, it's like my partner broke all the rules because of his partner. And at that point to, to get to that, he had to literally cross every line to get there and blur that line between being a criminal and being, being the badge. And I think that that is, that it's interesting because by the end, he is trying to still do the right thing, even up until the last second, you know, because he's they pull out the, you know, the gun and everything and, and they're going to arrest him straight up. He's doing it by the book in the end. And ultimately, by the end, when Peterson dies, doing it by the book is what kills him because. Yeah. And and that I find to be really fascinating is that the what you went back on what you said, which is you would stop at nothing. You would destroy all of this. And you went good. And when that, what did that get you other than a sh like a shotgun to the chest? And 
now his partner who is essentially trying to continue to find and go after you know the girl who essentially turned on him as informant and and the lawyer who turned on him realizing that the system is far that more lawyer, corrupt that than guy's you. a skis what a scumbag dude um <laughs> um but no it's you're right it's a full circle of just this corrupt wheel especially in this city seems like it's just going to keep continuing but the only way to keep trying to push back on it is to is to fight it and i i think that that i think that that's what's great by the end like the ending ending upset some people i guess uh when it came out i'm like people are like i don't know uh but i think the ending rules i think it's great the ending does rule and again blurs that line between good and evil like the good guys are breaking bad to reference uh another great television show that is certainly kind of the template you're talking about i think friedkin is is one of the great architects of that kind of in modern media and it is interesting to see him this being his kind of last last kind of gasp at uh true authorship in this era because i would argue after this he becomes a journeyman in a lot of ways and i think he would probably agree with that where he no longer has a real say over what stories he's telling he just has to kind of make stuff and try to turn it give it his voice i think it's yeah i think it's with a lot of the movies coming up certainly for the next 15 years until he kind of goes into hiding a little bit yeah i think when he i think when we get to like the bug era he gets to kind of come back i think he comes back a little bit in yeah the the around 2000 yeah i mean we've got a at least one movie coming up that we'll talk about that really is like this was handed to him by a more popular at the time director because he couldn't make it anymore and he ran with it well he's had that throughout his career too he's he's walked into or been handed some pretty great circumstances yeah that's true cruising was not originally his project no and this what and this was wasn't this was he worked with the the, the, there was a book written he actually to do another michael mann comparison he kind of did what michael mann did with thief and went along with this guy who knew very much about this world and they went deep into the specifics of it in a similar way i mean they did the same thing with he did the same thing with french connection where he had the the real guy kind of walk him through all these very specific things that he did, like throwing all the drugs into beer and stuff like that came directly from, from them. And in this world, he went very deep into how to make fake money to mm-hmm. the point that apparently some people used this as the basis for making fake money. And they, when production wrapped, Friedkin gave a lot of the crew, some of the fake money, but he mm-hmm. only, he only gave them ones that were printed on one side, not two sides. But one of the crew's kids pulled allegedly, and this is all you got to take everything freaking says with a little bit of a grain of salt. But yeah, um, he says one of the crew people's kids uh, took the money off his dresser to go buy something at the convenience store and then use it at the convenience store. And the next thing you know, they're getting calls from the real Secret Service about counterfeiting money. And so this became like a whole thing. And they said, Billy, just be ready. The Secret Service is calling, going to call you soon because this money is too good. You can't just be doing this. And then according to Friedkin, he picked up the phone for the Secret Service guys. He's like, hey, we're going to need to come down and, and see you. And Friedkin said, okay, if you get a warrant, I'll talk to you with my lawyer. How about that? And apparently he never heard from them again. So uh, just a, another interesting little Friedkin anecdote. They went really deep into the details of counterfeiting money. And that is another one of those things that I really appreciate where you see all of this stuff happening when he's counterfeiting money. And none of it means anything to me, but I appreciate the process. I was going to say it seeing that process being done. Like you see the red dye that he puts over like the sheeted bills. I have no idea what that is. The green dye, you know, to, to or when he, it... they throw the poker chips into the dryer with mm-hmm. the dollar bills to like beat them up. <laughs> I, I think that rocks. That's awesome. I just love 
than that stuff in a movie, no matter what. I'm, I'm going to love that. Yeah, that stuff is, I mean, it's what you and I love is the process of, yeah, of what this whole operation is. I mean, it is all counterfeit to then make them rich, but it's also kind of feels like there essentially is an artificiality to him as a bad guy, as a gangster, sort of in this world. And I I don't know. I find Defoe to be absolutely fascinating because he does feel like a guy that's in, in he's very confident, but it could blow up in, in any moment. And he's got his hands in so many cookie jars and he doesn't feel like he's always 100% in control or One that cool he's a customer though. He's very cool and he's very great at masking it, but that doesn't mean that he's, mm-hmm. I mean, he, I mean, he, he can tell, but kind of can't tell. You could feel like he does have a step forward, but stuff doesn't know. always go right. No, it doesn't always go right. And, um, including trying to kill John Turturro. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Turturro's great in this, by the way. And he is. When's he bad? Maybe the Transformers movies. Nobody's good. good in the Transformers movies. Nobody's good in those movies. Giving it's, it his all. He's a ham steak. He uh, is. You know who's good in those movies? The Tooch. Isn't he in like just the fourth one? Something. I don't know. I think oh. I've only seen his scenes. But I When's like the Tooch bad? Oh, this is a great question. I mean, I love the Tooch. Lovely Bones, maybe? Love Stanley Tucci. Never saw the Lovely Bones, as a matter of fact. Well, when we do Peter Jackson down the road. You know what he's great in? Hmm. The Hunger Games. You know what's a weird franchise? The Hunger Games. <laughs> I saw you log that recently. Yeah, I actually forgot that I didn't log it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I logged it. And it's, yeah, I, I think I went a little hard on it when we talked about it a couple episodes ago. But it, it's not it's not good, I don't think. Zegler, I gave it, I gave it like the fact stars. that she's not doing a stellar southern accent. I still think is quite good in it. Do you have stock like in the her? guy who I don't remember his name? Do you have stock on Rachel Ziegler? See, this is this is interesting because West Side Story, maybe my favorite movie of that year. I think she's undeniable in that movie. Mm-hmm. And then the only thing I think I've seen her in since then is Shazam Two, Oof. which. Can't it's really not, hold against her. I was I gonna guess. say you can't blame her. Like that movie's bad. But I really thought the Snow White stuff was going to destroy her. I, I truly did. When is that movie coming out? I don't know. But she also seems to have I think her PR people got in touch with her and said, Rachel, just say that you like the old Snow White and don't say anything more than that. And <laughs> I think uh Why did she say something? Yeah, she did the whole like this is girl boss Snow White. And let oh, me just say, like it's an old, update. This ain't the old Snow White. That oh, movie okay. is bad because oh, the girl okay. falls in love. And this is girl boss Snow White. And everybody oh. was like, oh, geez, chill out. You're, you're being really annoying. And <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really see annoying. any of this. I didn't see any of this. So yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe my social media is weird or whatever, but uh, maybe my algorithm's off, but uh i i there was a lot of hate where a lot of people in her way i feel yeah. like a lot of people throw hate at her because she's um with her boyfriend and stuff like that like i, I feel like they get, she like, has it, it is a credit to her that i like her because theater kid energy is like poison to me yeah you don't I like that hate it and you know, she like, has it yeah. and i still think she's kind of a star so yeah. you know I, I'm, you know what? I'm buying stock. Give it to me. I was going to say. It on. Okay. I'm buying I was stock. Like, it seems like you're trying to like convince yourself in or out. Yeah. And definitely Ansel, for sure. <laughs> Shut up. You're both like... uh, both West Side Story kids. Do you have stock in DeBose? I, I think her career died the day of... Uh... Winning that Oscar? No. Oh, did the thing? Angela Bassett. The did Angela the Bassett thing. thing, the thing? I don't know. She's, I mean, in that, she's in that movie ISS, which I have not seen. She's and in Argyle. She's in Argyle. Mm-hmm. Everybody's in Argyle. Did I see that Ar- Argyle is two and a half hours long? No. 
Well, by the time this this episode released, everybody will have seen Argyle. Or, everybody or, will have seen it. It's going to sweep the nation. Yeah, we are recording this a little bit ahead of time. Who is so. Agent Argyle? I, I know. Somebody was lucky enough to spoil it. So I already know in the future who Argyle is. 139 minutes. That seems like too much. Yes. Matthew Vaughn, though, is the definition of that seems like too much, though. I like Where? the Kingsman movies. I like both of them. You didn't see the King's Man? Oh, no, I didn't see that one. That's not Where? Matthew Vaughn, though, is it? Mm-hmm. He directed that one? What? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Am I wrong about that? I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, could, I, mean, I had just assumed. He did just, direct the King's Man. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know the uh, uh, reveal at the end of that movie, right? Oh, Hitler? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I did know that somehow. Hitler. Yeah. Also, if you asked me, I probably could have guessed it too. Yeah. I could have been like, well, it ended with World War One, so what are they going to? It's World I bet Matthew War Vaughan II. loves this movie. Uh which one? To live and die in LA? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like this is of a director, any action director of the last forty years probably likes this movie a lot. Especially if yeah. you're shooting movies in LA. Um, the chase, the car chase scene in this, the car chase is great. Not as it, good as French Connection, right? Some people put it up there with it. I think it's. I don't think it's as good as French Connection, but it's, it's definitely not as visceral as French Connection. No, but it's still very well put together. It's up there with oh, Sorcerer. It's, it's really well done. It's up there with yeah. Sorcerer. The Sorcerer is a little bit. I would give the Sorcerer, one a, sorcerer? a little bit. like car chase and Sorcerer. Well, there's like a yeah. Well, there's like a car. It's like I a mean, car the bridge chase. sequence is probably better than all. of them. I wasn't talking about the bridge sequence. I was just talking about like at the beginning of Sorcerer, where like the car crash sequence. Oh, like sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Scheider, yes, yes. Yeah, that, that so. I do love that. I did call that out as something I really loved. So. Yeah. So, um, but, but yeah, I think the chase sequences are actually the best in here, especially like the in the in the airport. And um, oh yeah, that's good. Movie logic to me that that scene doesn't exist now anymore. Just being able to be like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, secret yeah. service, and just like bolt. But then the guy chasing after him, like, oh, I was I was laughing so hard because I'm like, even back then they weren't getting away with that. Amazing, you know I mean? amazing payoff when there's a guy who just needs to pee who walks up. Yeah. And <laughs> it's like, oh, there's, I, there's two, I'll, there's, I'll there's three use another guys one. pointing at each other with guns. And he's yeah. like, oh, man, I just needed to take a leak. And then he turns <laughs> around and walks away. New rules. Well, zoink, Scoob. You know yeah. what I mean? It felt, very, it felt very like that. No, but also kind of stupid. You know what I mean? It's just like, wait. So your your goal was to then just go through and al- hit the alarm or whatever and instead of just walking up there, like letting you in and then run after him? You know what I mean? I mean, it's a fair point. Totally gave but away the fact that, that you're coming, way, dude. It's kind of that thing that we were talking about in the, the French Connection episode. Is he the best cop? No. No. Is he even good at his job? That's the good question. I got to ask you that. That's a good question. I mean, it is very French connection in that same way where he will achieve his goals one way or another. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will get hurt along the way. Obviously, in this one, spoiler alert, he dies. Which is not ideal. Well, we already did kind of say that earlier. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. And apparently that wasn't originally in the script. That was something Fried Friedkin came up with halfway through filming. He just thought this guy needs to die and we need to have a new chase, basically. Uh, which I thought was smart and really I think it's kind of what the movie's about, which I really like. So mm-hmm. it's good. And he's yeah. a he's a bad cop. I mean he's bad, he's bad man, is what he is. He's bad man. Yeah, it's yeah. He's it, he's yeah. He's not he's not good. He's pretty yeah. abhorrent. In fact, I I think. Yeah, for sure. Jay, um, anything else you want to discuss about to live and die in LA? I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface on this thing, but we kind of have. I know we've been all over the place. We have. I mean, I love that Robert Downey Sr. is in this movie. Loved it. As uh, their boss, quite like that. Yeah, he's just like. I love his line delivery because he's just reading the fucking manual to them, essentially. Like, you broke this rule, so therefore 
your Dunskies, essentially. And it's it's actually he's he he's affected because he's quite like he you can tell he's very corrupt and that he's he's just there to push the paperwork. You gotta get his okay, even though like his okay is not to pursue masters at all. And they're just gonna let the crime continue, regardless of how it is. And that's why it's so crazy and you see masters he's like the scene that made me go oh okay this guy thinks he's untouchable is when he goes to see Totoro in the jail because he's like you know he's like you shouldn't do this it's like you're gonna get caught he literally and, uh, loses a criminal he yeah beat up and <laughs> no no that's no bad. but I'm, that's bad copping no I'm not talking about a cop I'm talking about a uh, Defoe because Defoe oh, is yeah, yeah, cause, yeah, yeah, like because yeah. Defoe is like he's untouchable at this point, you know what I mean? And so therefore the system is not going to allow. It. But yeah, so you think, oh, okay, well then this guy's going to take matters into his own hands. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he ends up losing his freaking witness, and then and then like he's like, yeah, 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 I'll get him back. Yeah, I'll, I'll get I'll get him back. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, don't worry about it, boss. Yeah, don't worry about it, Joker. Let me go ahead and just uh, continue my case. And it's like I wouldn't give you thirty. Th- I wouldn't give you thirty dollars. If you lost a damn witness, let alone thirty thousand, for whatever this you know for this counterfeiting job that they're trying to do, I will um, say one thing I really didn't see coming was the guy who comes in on the train being an FBI agent. I thought that was a good twist. Yeah, that was a good twist. Yeah, I I didn't um, I knew the lawyer would do something, but I didn't think that the lawyer would like literally screw them all over at yeah. the end and that masters was kind of ahead of them all i didn't you know the, the ending the last like five minutes of it and you realize that his informant was the one that's she's double crossed him essentially and she's hold she's been holding all the cards to all this too which is kind of great for her because like she's treated like shit there is the yeah she is but man yeah there there is nobody looking out for anything but their self-interest really no, but day. that's that's how you not to say the title Frank of this Sinatra movie. Would say, that's life. Yeah, but that's also how you live and die in LA. Damn. Damn. Full circle, man. Just like Damn. the movie. Very much so. I will Any, say there are some yeah. I, it just did kind of keep going. There are some incredibly memorable just visuals, like frames in this movie, and it is kind of that Robbie Mueller thing. I think Paris, Texas is one of the best looking movies ever made. So Correct. obviously this movie is going to look good as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, for instance, Willem Dafoe throwing money into a fireplace naked, memorable visual him burning all of his counterfeiting um, equipment in that big warehouse. Uh, Man. In- incredible image. Um. I mean, there's so much other stuff too. I think and, like the the stuff in like the club scene, like early on when like Defoe's watching his girlfriend on the stage, yep, and yep. The shot of Defoe like kind of leaned back in his chair, watching. I her. think the um, the scene where Chase goes to the strip club and he's talking to the girl behind the glass. Yeah, and it's really kind of backlit really well. That actually looks exactly like maybe the most famous shot in Paris, Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, or it's at least very similar where um, they're looking through glass at each other in that scene. So, yeah. I don't know. A lot Paris, of Texas. You like that movie? Paris, Texas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Love that movie. Why wouldn't you love that movie? Also, when I was watching this with my wife, Willem Dafoe came on screen and she said, whoa, it's baby green goblin. <laughs> Ask, I did ask the wife. I said, "Would you?" And uh, she said, "Yeah, I think I would." Wow! And I was like, "Good for you." I was, it's like, it's uh, I was like, "Yeah, you would be um, in a relationship with Jesus Christ Himself." Um, Megan, you know, and she was just like, "Well, yeah, I would be." Um, but he's What's the best Willem performance ever. Yep. Ooh. That's tough. Because it'll probably be a while before we get to talk about Willem. I know. Well, I mean, Willem? Willem? 
Is it like this? It's like the last time we're going to talk about him for a while, I guess. Upcoming series. Sure. I maybe. So. Yeah. so, yeah, you can. Fans of the podcast, you can eliminate well, several well, directors based several on several directors of your. A lot. <laughs> the guy does work with a lot of people. Um, best Willem. Best Willem Dafoe. Uh, I don't even love the movie, but he is freaking fantastic in the Florida Project. He is very, very good in that movie. He's the 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 reason why I would go back and watch it, even though I haven't watched that movie in a long time. Um, I like him in American Psycho. I don't think that that's his best. A Shadow of a Vampire is very, very Boondock good. Boondock Saints, of course. He actually is good in that movie. I'm not. He is uh, doing something in that movie. He's he's trying, um, which is better than a lot of people. Um, I'm trying. I'm just looking down his his list. He's played a lot of villains. Um, uh, he's 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 just known now as sort of like the bit guy. You know what I mean? You know what my uh, here's my pick for underrated hmm. Willem Dafoe flick. Hmm. Togo. You ever see Togo? Is that the the bobsled? Movie? The one about the dog? Yeah. Is that like the one where he it, it's the real hero? Balto was trash. Togo oh, so like... was the real <laughs> article, man. Where it's like Balto yeah. stole Togo's thunder. Um, and I need people to know that the movie's actually like genuinely, I think, kind of good. It made me cry. I think he's he's really good in The Lighthouse, which is probably his best work of his more recent stuff. I think he's phenomenal. Oh, he's very good in the lighthouse. He's phenomenal. I thought he was good in uh, whatever it's called, Northman. Yeah, he's only got like what, like two or three scenes. Yeah, he's going for it though. Um, he's in he's in one of your favorite uh, comic book movies, Spider Man No Way Home, Aquaman. Uh, yeah, I hate Spider Man No Way Home. I don't want people to think I actually like that movie. <laughs> uh, I do like Aquaman. Yes, I do like him in that. Didn't I mean, come he, back for Aquaman too. He is good in the original that original Spider Man film for sure. He is. Um, uh, he's you know he's he's he you know what he's really good in is in a movie that it's like not my favorite Wes Anderson film for sure, but he is super hilarious in the Life Aquatic of Steve Zizou. Um, he is good in that. Yeah. He's really good in that. And then, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's good in English patient. He's good in wild at heart. He's very good in wild at heart. Mm-hmm. Now we're just um, going down the list. I'm just looking. I mean, he's, I mean, yeah. Last temptation of Christ. He's very good in that movie. Jay, there's, you know, he's, he's, he's the lead of that thing. I haven't seen, um, antichrist in like, Forever. I haven't seen most of his Von, Von Trier stuff. So. I'm not a Von Trier guy. I'm just. I, it's going to make for an awkward series next. <laughs> oh, wait, I already ruined that. because Yeah, you already. Re- yeah, you can't use that Dang joke it. as a bad part of the bit when we just eliminated it out of the equation. Um, but yeah, he's no, good in what? Finding Nemo. He is good in Finding Nemo. Mm-hmm. I love it. Like he's got he's got a he's good voice actor. He, and he's in that and Fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, he's in the boy in the hair in the dub version. Um, yeah, he's he's. You know what I'm going to say? Willem Dafoe, good at his job. I agree. And he's, he, you know, I always forget he's in that he's in that first John Wick movie too. Yeah, he is. He's like, I don't know what to call him. Like his friend. John Wick is his kind of apprentice or something. Yeah. And sort of. Well, not really. I think they were just like he keeps old saving friends. his butt. Yeah, he keeps saving him, and he shouldn't. He shoots that so, girl in the hotel. You looking forward to uh, Nosferatu? I'm I'm just a huge. I'm I'm in. I'm I'm just into whatever he does. Eggers. Oh, you're a big Eggers guy now. Yeah, I'm an egghead. I am. I'm close. I'm really close. I'm really close. I like his movies. I have not loved one of his movies. I know you love The Northman. Um, I love the Northman and Light the Lighthouse. Lighthouse. And I'm, I like uh the witch. Yeah, or the Vivitch or whatever the hell it, mm-hmm. you know they call it. Um I uh I think all three of those movies they're like four star movies. They're really good. 
I don't think he's made his masterpiece. No, yet, I don't. But... And that's what I'm waiting for. Like, I'm like, yeah, I like these. I don't love them. Like, there's something keeping me from being like, wow, that's one of my favorite movies or my guys. But I feel like Nosferatu, if they let him cook, that's the thing. They didn't let him fully. I don't feel like they let him fully cook on the Northman. And well, apparently and yet the, and then, the thing uh, about the Northman was it made so much money VOD on video on demand. Yeah. And so hopefully they let him cook. I mean, they Nos- won't give him a Northman budget for Nosferatu, but no, this is focus and uh, universal again. I mean, big studio movie. I mean, it's, it's a big honking studio movie. Yeah. How much are they giving him for this thing? They're putting it out on Christmas Day. They kicked out Jordan Peele. Nothing says Christmas like Nosferatu. I've been <laughs> saying that for years. Sar- Bill Sarsgaard, Nicholas Holt, Lily Rose Depp, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Emma Corrin, Willem Dafoe. That's a hell of a and, cast. Uh, of course, got to have uh, Rafe Innocent in there. Yes. <laughs> I forgot about Rafe Innocent. Yep. Yeah, he's there. For sure. Simon McBurney. McBurney. Yeah, the first image it's of Defoe, right? That's been out. I don't know that I've seen it. It's wild. I don't know how you have it, but yeah, no, the movie made it didn't make anything at the box office. It only made seventy on a seventy million dollar budget. But did yeah, you watch apparently. SpongeBob growing up? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Do you remember when they made a Nosferatu reference on SpongeBob? Like when it was the hashlinging slasher episode, yeah, the the, the no, it's for uh, too because he's like turning off the light. Too. That's yeah. turning off the lights. Yeah, remember how like that show used to be really goddamn funny. Yeah, it did. And a lot of those people have not gone on to like work for like Cartoon Network, essentially writing like their Adult Swim shows. Well, yeah, the what whatever his name was, the main guy left right, and then he got um, Adventure Time and. No, the the main guy passed away just a few years ago, right? Because he had did he something? Oh, R.I.P. Yeah, it was sad. That is sad. Now you just—it sounds like my childhood just going away. Yeah, I haven't watched SpongeBob since I was a child, but those shows, those episodes, still hold up. Good, and it's still Good part. Of, well, you watch it, right? You probably watch it all the time with the kid. No, he's not at SpongeBob yet. No. When when are you at SpongeBob? When you're like five or six? Yeah, probably. You're I mean, into Bluey. Doing, she loves this show called Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Oof. Oh yeah, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. That's the it's, real. Deal. It's coming. That kind of stuff is on the way. Well, Although can't there you? Is the show he also loves on Netflix called Trash Truck. Good. What is Trash Truck? I it's hate to. Add, I'm doing this only for the <laughs> listeners. I don't need to ask this, but I'm doing this for the listeners. What is trash truck? It's about a young boy who is best friends with a trash truck. So like a garbage truck? Yeah, like a garbage truck. But why don't they just call it garbage truck? Why do they got to call it trash truck? Alliteration, my man. <laughs> I guess so. And then they're also um, friends with like a bear and a mouse. Well, like and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is that is that now going to get like remade into like a horror television show that your child's going to watch? Yeah, probably, probably. Although what are you? They, st- they they have the rights to um, Steamboat Willie, not Mickey Mouse. Oh, that's right. Because Mickey Mouse is a separate entity. But that's the same. It's the same fucking thing. They don't have the rights to the words Mickey Mouse, but they have it to Steamboat Willie, which is mm-hmm. essentially what Mickey Mouse was. Proto Mickey. So. Technically, when they remake this, they can't use it. They're going to get sued, all these people, because they're already doing the Mickey Mouse slasher movies. It's weird that this is like what people thought of. Like, if you're going to have these, like Pinocchio and Things Peter Pan and the winning, yeah, I mean, that the first thing is we're going to make these demented slasher movies. Well, sadly, that Winnie the Pooh movie which they made for 45 cents, I think made a little bit of money. Yeah. They're making a sequel. Yeah. Well, good for them. I guess. Gotta say, I haven't seen it. You know what? I wish it had a sequel to live, live and die, die in LA. Say, oh yeah. In Los Angeles. It's I don't, cool. I think it ends perfectly. I know, but I like, I like, I liked it. I would have liked to see more. I loved it. Yeah. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. 
Are you just trying to up me there and saying that you loved it? Even though how I'm... many Friedkins post this have you seen before? I have to count. Well, I'm not going to tell. You know, I don't want to tell which ones. Like I, that I've seen on my own. Yeah. Okay. Let me look here. Let me look here. This is I great. I've seen one, two, uh, two, I think. Maybe three. One, two, and three. Does does K Mutiny count? Uh, sure. Three. Yeah, I think three for me as well. Yeah, I've seen three. I won't tell you which ones. Kind of spoils it for the audience. So. I would say this is the end of Friedkin being a relevant auteur for twenty five years. So then I have to call. I have to change the top of the show and say auteur and sometimes journeyman. It's just a really interesting career. You could say Altman was a journeyman for a decade. You know, everybody had their turn, or most people had their turn. The eighties was just a weird time. <laughs> It really was. This is like a, this is, for, yeah, this is, I mean, this is more towards the end of his eighties run, but yeah, he doesn't really get back to it till like 2000, like his last five. And this, films you can see, done. you can see why a studio would be into this movie. Yeah. Cause this is tapping into essentially what they're going to tap into for years to come. It, it feels kind of like tricking a studio into making kind of a classic William Friedkin movie. Yeah. Which I and like also, those movies. That's every Paul Verhoeven but like, movie. But it's like you're saying, making a movie, though, in the style of the era. He gets right. to make that. And, and It has the bones of something familiar, but it is... Well, it's like when we talked about French Connection that. and everybody's trying to make a bullet movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? And some end up transcending that, which is French Connection, and others are like, you know, made for 10 cents and nobody gives a shit. Right. You know what I mean? And this is one that has built a cult status because it, it made decent money. It didn't make like, a, you know, it, it, it didn't break records. It didn't do particularly well. Friedkin blames Ted Turner. Well, I'm sure Jane Fonda would as well. Who was the head um, of MGM at the time. And he said yeah. this Ted Turner did not like this movie and did not market this movie. So, which feels weird. Cause this would be like a movie that totally plays on TBS or TNT. Ted Turner was busy colorizing. It's a wonderful life. So son of a bitch. Yeah. You know that that was an option when I watched it on prime video and I, and I didn't notice it at first. And so I started turning it on and I saw color. I went, what is this? What is that this? used to be? Yeah. How it was played on TV. Terrible, terrible. It's bad. It's, like, it's just a weird process. Yeah. That would be like putting color on Casablanca. I don't want to see gonna that. Do it. He was going to do it to citizen Kane. Oof. And I think that was the last straw and people revolted and people were like, uh, you mean one of the best movies of all time and you want to put color on it? He did it to a few. I can't remember what the other ones were, but is he part of the color for like Gone with the wind or like the, the re-upping of that? Cause I know that there was like a big like restoration of that. I'm not sure. Process. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, w I wouldn't do it. I don't like it. Like, does you know, those movies are beautiful the way they are. I don't need to hit turn, son of a bitch. Anyway, Jay, Jay, are you paying attention? Yes. Are you focused? Yeah, I was looking at Ted Turner. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. Um, before we get out of here. We're going to test your award season knowledge based on the film we just reviewed, which was To Live and Die in L.A. In a segment we like to call It's an Honor to Get Nominated, Jay was To Live and Die in L.A. To Live, yeah. Was To Live and Die in L.A. Almost died there for a second. Was it nominated for any Oscars? I'm going to say no. You know what, Jay? Mm -hmm. You're wrong. What? This got nominated no. for an Oscar? Nah, I'm just fucking. Oh, with you. okay. Right. <laughs> it wasn't nominated for anything. Uh, it was. It was a uh, yeah. It was a movie that didn't. It didn't break through, and even like any anything essentially. It's a, it's it's nothing. Got some stuntman award nominations back in 1986, and was the winner of best vehicular stunt and most 
spectacular sequence. Wow. And, and what uh, award show was that? The Stuntman Awards, mm. 1986. It's most. Re- it was actually just recently nominated for a Saturn Award. Recently for what? Like best physical distribution or something? Best 4K home media release. Release. Wow. It's a yeah. good one. It's nominated this year, actually, for it. Not the Saturn. Can't wait to see who wins. Um... Maybe it'll be to live and die in LA. Maybe so. It's a good song too. I was going to say to live and die in LA. What do you think of songs being, um, being named after the title and, and, and do you miss it? Do you miss movies not having their own thing? So of a time. Is it though? Or are people just gotten lazy? I think it's of a time. People don't like things being that literal anymore. Yeah. Would you nominate this for anything? Yeah, I'd nominate it for Best Picture. Do you want to know what the Best Picture nominees are? Uh, Yeah, hit me. Out of Africa. Okay. Okay. The Color Purple. Okay. Kiss of the Spider Woman. Mm-hmm. Pritzi's Honor. Haven't seen it. Haven't seen Pritzi's Honor? Mm-mm. You're probably not missing out on too much. And Witness. Mm, Witness is good. Witness is great. Peter Weir, a guy that we should talk about one day. That would be fun. That's a good series. Made some good Um, ones and a very interesting career. I'd probably kick out out of Africa. It's a movie. Uh, What's your favorite movie of this year? This this would be 85. Mm -hmm. 1985. What's yours? Do you have Mine one? Is Mishima. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. You know, you you were the one who got me on the Mishima train. Yeah, Mishima is one of my ten favorite movies ever. I love that. Movie. Um, hang on, I gotta look at a big list. Talk about movies. a good looking movie. That is one of the most beautiful movies I've Mishima. ever seen. Um, it's like uh, this is the year of Back you got to the Future. After Hours, you got your Brazil. Get your you know your breakfast clubs here. Come and see. This is a very eighties year. I mean, you got it's, Back to yeah. the Future, Rocky Four, Witness, like we mentioned. Follow that bird. <clears throat> What's follow that? Oh, Room with a View. It's the Big Bird movie where he goes on oh, a road trip. Oh, okay. Um, A View to Kill. You like A View to Kill? That Bond movie. Did you ever see that one? Is that the? Is that a more? Yeah. I haven't seen it. I've skipped the last like three mores. Ron, I went on a, we went on a whole James Bond journey, and I just said I cannot do any more Roger Moore. Yeah, he he was good. Less is more. As far Less as is more. Is concerned. Uh, Kurosawa's Ron is there. Never seen that one. Never seen it. That's you're, an embarrassing blind spot. You're a little bit I, of. I, I did a I did a Kurosawa watch through, and I've seen like 15 Kurosawas, but it's kind of before his big banger start. Oh, so it's it's interesting, but there there you, are some real hidden gems in there. But yeah, I haven't seen several of. Why'd you stop? So I was I don't remember. Uh, this was years ago. Yeah, I'm trying Maybe to look that. That'd be some fun homework. I don't you know. know. What? I probably should have watched instead of Deal of the Century. Huh, Ron? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I probably go Ron or um. Yeah, or I'll go with that. Or Room of the View is great as well. After Hours. I'm not a big After Hours guy. You know that. Yeah, I do know that. That's one of your worst opinions. I think it's uh, it's definitely lesser Scorsese. As far as uh, Oscars not... for this bad boy, oh, I'd co- go... Cocoons this year. I'd go Cinematography for, for sure. Yeah, I go editing. I think this is a very uh, interestingly edited film. Would you nominate the song? Oh, I mean, this is a slam dunk. Say Could you even die. Maybe. Say you say me. Lionel Richie one song. Miss Seely's Blues from Color Purple was nominated. I'd go adapted screenplay. The Power of Love from mm, uh, Back that is to the a Future. Banger. I mean, come on. 
Separate Lives from White Knights and Surprise Surprise, a chorus line, which I think is like surprise surprise. I'd almost have to give it to Power of Love just because of the Huey legacy. Because Lu- of Huey Lewis being part of the news. He gave me those news. He gave he, me that news. He was delivering the news. Um yeah. I would I would nominate it for what'd you say, cinematography? I said you cinematography. Say, yeah, I'd throw it in there over whatever the hell Murphy's Romance is, which is nominated. You with don't the know color Murphy's purple. Romance, dude? Uh, evidently, I don't. Um, color Purple, Out of Africa, Ron, and Witness. Um, yeah, I would throw that in there. i throw it in for... i throw it in editing, to be fair. Murphy's Romance is a Sally Field movie. If you gave me a hundred dollars, I would have never been able to tell you that. But it, but yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, would you would you adapted screenplay it? Yeah, adapted screenplay. Give it to him. Yeah, I throw it in there too. There's a lot I would. It's a good movie. I, I mean, definitely a huge put, part of any car chase is sound. So you yeah, can, you can throw sound in there. Would you throw Defoe in there? Ooh, to go support. I mean, again, I probably haven't seen half the nominees for supporting. So Cocoon I, I, out of Africa, Princess I'm, Honors, I'm Jagged him, Edge. I'm throwing Lord him in there. Yeah. I'm throwing him in. Yeah, why not? Throw him in there. Would you put Freakin' in for director? Out of Africa, uh, Sidney Pollock, Juan Hector, Abakigo. I'm putting Freakin' in. Woman. Yeah, I'd probably kick out Kiss of a Spider Woman or John. Houston for Pretty's Honor and put him in there. Or Pollock. It seemed like Pollock was it was just gonna be his that year. Movie one seven was nominated for And we 11. celebrate it to this day. It was nominated for a uh eleven one seven color purple, uh famously nominated for um eleven and one none. That's crazy. Yeah. It was one of those, like, it was one of the, I think it was one of the, for the longest time, it was the only film to have ever done that, where it had double digit nominations and then it didn't. And then, uh, Gangs of New York joined him because Gangs didn't win a thing that year. And then Marty's done that twice. He's, uh, the Irishman was the same way. So interesting. Don't you think? Interesting indeed. Yeah. As you can tell, Jay is losing interest. Um, so, I'm Jay, just looking at Sidney Pollock. Oh, you're just looking at Sidney Pollock? Seeing yeah. if he would be a director if we want to do? God. Remember Pass. how good he is in Eyes Wide Shut? Boy, oh boy. Almost as good as he is in uh, Michael Clayton. Yeah, he's, he was a good actor. He might be he a just, better actor than director. He just, hey, that's not a bad take. It's not a bad take. Take Jay, yeah, because I'm not, I'm not even that crazy about Tootsie, but you don't like Tootsie. It's okay. Okay, Jake, can you tell everybody where they can find you and all your work after that? You can find me at awardswatch.com <laughs> if I'm doing any writing. Uh-huh. You can find me on the uh, Awards Watch podcast uh-huh. network for uh-huh. this podcast, uh-huh. and if I can give a recommendation. Uh-huh. See, I've been watching nothing but freaking freaking movies. Yeah. So I don't really have anything. So I'll say uh my wife and I started rewatching New Girl. And that is a funny show. That's a great show. That is a funny show. And also in the credits for the most recent episode we watched, I discovered who did the music for this particular episode of New Girl? Ludwig Göransson. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So that's why that's why I'm now listening to the score for New Girl on a loop. <laughs> it's weird is that he ripped a lot of tracks for Oppenheimer off on New Girl. Yeah, Dude. it's crazy. There's one episode where it's like it's the most intense sitcom episode I've ever seen. Yeah. It's like uh Zoe De Chanel is just like existential the whole time. Um well you can find me on on Twitter and Instagram and Letterboxd at Ryan McQuaid 77. You can follow my work at awardswatch.com. 
Uh, if you like other podcasts, we do our main show that releases every Monday. Um, five stars on iTunes and Spotify. We greatly appreciate five star reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, oh, what's uh, the the newsletter? Yeah, go sign up for the, the newsletter. newsletter. You got any you know. recommendations? Yeah, I'll do one. Um, I recently rewatched a 2023 film that didn't get nominated Wonka. for any Oscars. No, I did not watch Wonka. Wife hadn't seen it, and I wanted to watch it. Uh, so I put on the old Netflix, and I watched The Killer. Good one. David, David Fincher. Uh, that movie's fucking funny. It is. And um, I got to say this, though. This is my, this is my one complaint. Mm-hmm. I am mad at Netflix for not giving us a physical disc for this because the night sequences, especially the fight Ooh, sequence, that is a rough transfer. Dang. It's getting compressed. That compression's killing it. That compression killed that scene. And Fincher should have known that. And it was very difficult to watch. Much better in the theater. Wow. Pray to God we get a disc one of these days. We don't even have a disc for Mank. It's really upsetting. Yeah, that is a little weird. It's a little upsetting. Anyway. The uh, 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 Here's the question. Yeah. So this was supposed to be the big... 2023 was supposed to be the big Fastbender year. What the hell happened with that YTT movie? That thing oh, just that... came and went in a flash. The movie doesn't exist because it's also... Sorry, ter- on iTunes. It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu? Yeah. It's already on non-paid VOD? Yeah. Wow. It was there before you knew it. Wow. You want to know why? Because it's bad? Because it's terrible. Terrible. Wow. I'm going to watch it. It's bad. Do you like... You know, have you ever had this where sometimes a director Mm. just starts losing it so bad you start questioning how good their old movies are? Yes. I had that literally two years ago. Alex That's Garland. how I feel about District 9. That's how I felt when I watched Men a couple years ago, and I was like, I wait a minute. Ex Machina. God, what, I love it, that movie. Is Ex Machina in Annihilation bad? Because it's not even that high in Annihilation, but I love Ex Machina. I love those movies. I love those two movies, and I'm watching Men, I'm like, did did he lose it? But now and, like, is Hunt for the Wilder People actually terrible? But then like I watch... No, it's, it's, it's charming. Um, but... Because you want to know why? It's the one that he's not in. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm not looking forward to Civil War. Yeah, that one, that one's going to be interesting. It's not going to be interesting. It's going to be pathetic. We're both going to see it. Well, yeah, we're, we're not going to have a choice. We're going to end up seeing it. And that movie could either be like, the trailer could be subverting all expectations or they could be exactly what the trailer is delivering. And it'd be an absolute eye roll of a movie. I think it could be, it's supposed to be like their biggest budget a 24 to date. Yeah, it could be an totally ab- crash and burn. That's going to be an absolute disaster. I feel well now they're doing death stranding. So what's that? The video game. Oh, that's right. They're dabbling in, in the IP, the video game about, delivering packages so it's like an amazon commercial uh amazon apocalypse jesus what are we doing it's not actually amazon but yeah i know but like that doesn't make it any it does it wouldn't make it any better or any worse that just sounds like a terrible uh, idea i own it i haven't played it very much because well you own a lot of delivering packages you own the game yeah oh okay well i was like you don't own. i need to play it more Maybe so. Maybe I'll give I it a shot. Know. I don't know. This this yeah. episode has been off the wall. Yeah, I We've loved been it. All over the place. One of our I best episodes. One of our best episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, next week we will be back. We'll be talking about. <laughs> I think uh, just to give a little bit of heads up, maybe uh, another tangent filled episode. His most revered film, Blue Chips. Yes. Because if you want anything, it's Jay and I talking about a sports movie, basketball. Ooh, it's gonna be this is gonna be interesting. It's gonna, it's gonna, gonna be a doozy. Be, I think it's gonna be great. So thank you all so much for listening, and we'll see you all next time. <laughs>